Hi everybody, Willie again. So, um, right at the beginning of the year, we had in lecture one or in lecture two these big red arrows, you know, and, and, and a lot of focus was placed on the interaction cycle. It was called. Um, so, so in this specific notebook that we're doing now, that we're going to be discussing in class, um, is the first example where we get the whole red cycle to roll. So um, amazing math happening here. You might not see directly, but uh, you can trust me if I tell you beforehand that it should be appreciated and hopefully it will be appreciated. So let's get on with it. So what we have here is really what we did in chapter 3 and chapter 4 referred to as the response function. That's that whole stoichiometric matrix where we really calculate rates. And the important thing to have a look at here is in this specific example, we're going to be looking at how mu and theta varies. Okay, so it's very important to understand that what we have now is mu being a function in this specific example of the substrate concentration and the product concentration. And similarly, we have that for theta. It will be a function of the substrate concentration, <coughs> sorry, as well as the product concentration that forms, that's the ethanol in this specific example. So um, we can have a quick look at these functions. So first of all, if we have a look at the effect of substrate on theta or mu, we will see that we like to define a maximum value. So we typically define some sort of maximum achievable, and then we have deviation from the maximum, typically where we go smaller than the maximum. So the curve, what we have, is something that looks like this. Right at very slow, very small concentrations, we have a thing like this, and that's referred to as the Monor region. I'll get into detail on that now. And then we operate at the maximum, maybe at very high substrate concentrations, we will start deviating from the maximum. First of all, very important to have a look at this part. It only happens at very small concentrations, so it wasn't really drawn correctly here. We're talking maybe 200, 300 milligrams a liter. So really in batch fermentations, that'll be right at the end where the substrate is completely depleted. What we have here is a cute little term. It's called the Monod term. It just looks like this. It's CS divided by Km plus CS. And really, this is just a elegant function to say if there's no more substrate available there's going to be no more growth or maintenance so the rate becomes zero when cs becomes zero and that's really all that this little function is um, it's nice and it's continuous and as cs approaches zero the rate will approach zero so this is really just in chapter five we had like just the if statement to say if all the substrate is gone make the rate zero. This is a function that does it for us. On the other side, we might, we're not doing it in this example, but we might get something like substrate inhibition where very high concentrations of glucose, for example, really irritates the bug. And uh, this will typically be described by a term where we have something like one plus the substrate concentration divided by some parameter Ks. If we put this to the minus one, you will see that we get this type of decreasing functionality away from the maximum. Okay, so these are typical inhibition functions that we get. Please just note the Monor region over here is for very low concentrations, and that's really to make the rates zero as the substrate becomes zero. Then we can also have a look at the effect of product concentrations. I'm just gonna draw two of them. So the effect of product concentrations on either C or muta. So um, what we have here is that zero product concentration will typically have no effect. So then we'll be operating at some sort of max that we define. This will be a parameter that is given to you. And then we have different types of deviations. First of all, we get the type that gradually declines but doesn't really go to a value of zero. This will have a very similar functionality as the functionality we just have where we have a 1 plus Cp divided by, let's 
squared kp to the minus one so what we have here is as the concentration of product increase we have a gradual fall in either the theta or the mu value and uh, you're really getting less rate <coughs> than what you had at the maximum we get another type of inhibition which is really referred to sometimes as a termination inhibition and here we will have a straight line relationship um, where we go up to a point and that point will be really the maximum um, uh, the maximum concentration where either growth or maintenance is still possible and then from there on we continue with a zero value so that's just a linear function and we'll typically describe it by something as 1 minus cp over cp star cp star referring to this terminal concentration where either the growth rate or the maintenance rate becomes zero okay so this is a gradual fall that we get with this functionality while this is a straight line fall up to a value of zero that we get with this linear functionality so um just want to take this out so the important thing to realize if we have a look at this matrix description also referred to as the response function is is really that if we change the values of either mu or theta and you've done so in, in few of the tuts where we've uh, specified theta to be zero for example and specify mu to be a different value what happens if is if we change these red values and they will be changing because of the concentration changes in the fermenter we are effectively changing the rates first of all we're changing the absolute value of the rates so those answers that you got from the stoichiometric matrix you will see that their size actually change as we change the values of the of, of, of mu and theta also it's not just about changing the absolute values but it's also about changing the ratio of the two or of the rates with respect to one another so um you know that yields are just the ratio of rates so what will happen is if we change for example just one of these parameters over here you will see that the absolute values change and also the yields or the ratio of rates are changing so what we effectively have is that the response function or the stoichiometric matrix returns varying rate values but also varying yield values so on the um, side of the bacteria or the fungus we have um, the response function we also sometimes refer to the response function as the rate function okay so the rate function describes what the bug does okay and then on the other side we have the bug that is now placed into the fermenter so on the other side we have the fermenter equation now the fermenter equation for a batch system is fairly simple it's just dc dt equals ri times cx okay so what we have is that the fermentation equation really obtains the rate from the response function and it uses it uses the ode int function so you have played around with ODN a little bit to really generate the concentration profiles of various products and reagents in the reactor. Okay, so this, this will be um, something like CS and CP and some other components against time. Okay, so what's happening is, is that the concentrations of the substrate, for example, or even the concentrations of the products are changing as the integration proceeds and as they change uh, you now remember very important that mu and theta are a function of substrate or product concentration so i'm going to draw that thick arrow here as the concentration over here changes we are now effectively changing the values of theta or mu i'm going to make this even thicker so I have the same thick red line we had at the beginning of the here. So the, the fermentation equation is changing 
the concentrations in the fermenter that's now in the big fermenter and because of these changes we are now affecting the values of mu and theta these will cause us to get different absolute rate values but also different ratios between the rates but this in the differential equation or this in the the code that we're doing over here will now calculate new rates so we'll be calculating new rates that fit into the fermenter equation okay so because i don't think i've said this well mu and theta will be changing because they are changing we are now predicting different rates these rates get returned to the fermentation equation and in effect we now have different rates that is being integrated as we move along in time so there is a big interaction well we can call it a yeah we can call it an interaction cycle happening and uh, it's important for me that you see this cycle that is continuously happen as we integrate and recalculating rates in this first example that we're doing over here in 5.2 so very important for the first time things are now getting together we are doing what we set out to do our first lecture had these thick red arrows and now we actually do the code and the math that represents these thick red arrows so be careful just copying code getting answers feeling good i want you to see and understand the thick red arrows that's it thank you